Thank you very much. Not everyone who gets introduced by the puff is fired, so <laughs> I'm uh, flattered. I thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you also, Rabbi Neuberger. And the boys who were very inspiring. Um, for having me come tonight. Now, usually when I come here on my occasional visits to Atlanta to make sure that my son isn't running the community into the ground, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he left already, right? So, uh, I'm, I, I'm always hoping that I could just hide in my study and uh, not be asked to do anything. just want to be here. Rabbi Neuberger grabbed me the first day, day I came in, or even before, I think. Well, I'm always happy to say yes most of the time to Rabbi Neuberger. He and I go back very many years. Matter of fact, his father and I, well, Shlita used to learn together in Baltimore and Israel. Israel. Matter of fact, if you see Rabbi Emanuel careening down the list of road sometimes in his car, it's because his father taught me how to drive. <laughs> I remember those very vividly. And uh, I'm always hoping that, that people just, will, just don't bother me for a while. But every time I am bothered, I am uplifted and I am inspired, as I am tonight by the wonderful turnout and by the wonderful words that we hear about some of the history of uh, Or Yisrael. Of course, I was not in the community when Or Yisrael began. Uh, this began. Well, I was out, so I can't be given any uh, credit or, or blame for, uh, <laughs> for this institution, although it has become a very great source of pride to Atlantans and to, um, and to uh, Jews everywhere. A little bit of perspective, you know, when I first came to Atlanta, before any of you was born, I suspect, um, in the 50s, the very idea of starting a day school, the Hebrew Academy, was anathema to most of the community. It was like unheard of. You want to turn our children into rabbis? You know, like that's possibly one of the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> it's not really the best thing that could happen to somebody, but it's not the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> We had a struggle uh, in 1954, was it, Terry? The first year the kindergarten began. Terry was one of the <coughs> first students in the kit. Terry Tenenbaum was one of the first students in the kindergarten. My, my wife, may she be well, was the first teacher in the Hebrew Academy. And Terry was one of her first students. She was pregnant with Was that? That's right. That's correct. Terry still refers to my wife as his Rosh Hashiva. <laughs> so then was quite a breakthrough as well. In any case, um, that was a, a, really in those days to start a day school in Atlanta, Georgia was, was a breakthrough. It was establishing a new plateau, a new level. And then some years later, it may have been eight or ten years later, there, it was seen that we need to have in this community a high school. So high school was begun, again, to great objection. It's enough you have a day school, elementary school. Why do you need a high school? But a high school was begun, Yeshiva High School. And uh, a new level was established, a new plateau. And following that, Torah Day School was established, which was, again, a new level, more intensive level of of day school education than the Hebrew Academy offered. Something that would cater to the burgeoning Orthodox community, which by then was, was <coughs> growing. And that began and continues to this day. Again, a new level. And then the Kolel, I don't know, the, the chronology may be off a little bit, but the Kolel also began around, just around that time, uh, which was a shocking thing, an astonishing thing, that Atlanta would have a Kolel. That was begun under, while I was in Israel, and my son, Rabbi Lon, really was responsible for the, for the uh, 
inspiration of the Kolach. And then came, of course, years later, uh, the continued growth of the community in many, many ways, but in terms of education, the growth in terms of or Israel, which again broke through another, another high level. So the history of Atlanta Jewry has been a history of continuing breakthroughs on ever higher and more intensive levels. And uh, the founders of Or Yisrael did not uh, have an easy time of it. Again, there were objections. Why do we need this? We already have a high school. And one of the, uh, one of the great uh, satisfactions that I have had over the years is watching the growth of non-Orthodox day schools. You may say, why is that satisfying? First of all, it's satisfying because even if the level of learning are not very, very high in some of those schools, nevertheless, I find it much better that a child should go to a Jewish school of any sort rather than go to an, a, a public school where, where his, uh, his future is not at all guaranteed. On the contrary, his negative future is guaranteed. As a matter of fact, you know that when the Davis Academy began, it's a reform school, right? Reform day school? They called me in to talk with me. Some of the leaders called me in, wanted some advice about how to start a day school. We've had so much experience in Beth Jacob. We didn't know what we were doing, but we had so much, <laughs> so much experience that they wanted advice. And I gladly came to some of their meetings to help them out. I thought it would be a wonderful thing. But the great satisfaction I had was that the very people who in the 50s had fought the establishment of the Hebrew Academy were now establishing their own day schools. The Epstein School, the this school, the that school, all these people were establishing their own schools. And the Federation, which fought us tooth and nail in the 50s, soon enough came around and saw what was happening with that Jewish education and began supporting and supporting, as they do today, handsomely, the day schools and issues of uh, of Atlanta. I don't know whether they support Or Yisrael. I don't think they do. And they, yeah. huh? Yeah. Not yet. We'll see. Well, it depends the price that they ask, you know. But uh, <laughs> it is a history moves. Nothing is static. Nothing is. It's dynamic. The community has grown. The community of Atlanta is dynamic, and it's grown. And Or Yisrael represents another step in that, that continuing growth. Another breakthrough. Let me just share with you a quick uh, thought that uh, I came across just the other day. It's a well-known Maharal who says in discussing uh, the name Adam, Adam, um, says that uh, on every day of creation, except Monday, it says uh, God saw that it was good. Kitov. Only in one place does the Torah say, Ayarakim, he told me, oh, very good. That's on Friday, after it creates Adam. Then it's Tov Ma'od, very good. That word Ma'od, Mem Alef Dalet, is a key word. It means very. It means something that isn't static, that becomes very. It changes either up or down, but it's it's very, it's not by itself uh, standing still. Adam is the same words, same letters as Ma'od. Aleph, Dal, Mem, Mem, Aleph, Dal, it's the same words. Adam is the only creature of the days of creation which is not static. God creates a mountain, it creates an ocean, it creates animals, they stay the way they are. They don't change. It creates a rock. It stays as it are. Stone Mountain has been the same rock for thousands of years. They don't static. They don't, they're, they're not dynamic. They don't grow. They don't move. Adam is the only thing that has the potential to grow, to move, either up or, God forbid, down. Adam is Ma'od, is the only very creature of all the creatures of creation. So says the Maharal and others as well. That's why it says Tov Ma'od. The uh, Or Yisrael also is a Ma'od institution. 
is the kind of institution that will help Atlanta become Ma'od, that will help Atlanta grow and develop and prosper in, and uh, become something that it never was and never dreamed of being. So our bracha to you, the bracha of uh, Kla Yisrael, is that uh, Or Yisrael will continue to grow, as it has grown miraculously over the past number of years. It's 10 years now, or something approximately. <coughs> may it have many, many more years of growth. And may these young men who uh, represent the student body, may the entire student body grow and have nachas to one another. And I thank you all for bothering me to be here tonight because it does inspire and lift me up. So I can come back to Eretz Yisrael and tell the people there, you know, the Galut is not dying. They may not be happy to hear this, but the Galut has got its own vitality and it's growing and it's developing. And Yiddish guy is strong wherever there is the, the uh, cause of Torah learning. The key is intensive Torah learning. I've seen it all of my life in my dealing with people. When people are exposed to Torah, then the Shamas expand and blossom. And when children, youngsters, teenagers, young men and women are exposed